and think. John Turturro uh, is is with us. I saw it last night. It's a wonderful film, and and your 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 uh, characterization is so marvelously controlled that 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 uh, gag, which the audience enjoyed, Barton Fink could never enjoy. Right. He could never fully understand it. Um, you, you're wonderful in the film, but you did something uh, last night uh, when you were asked to introduce the film at the, the DC Film Festival. Right. Uh, you excused yourself and you brought <laughs> Barton Fink on. Yeah. And it was, it was an amazing performance, which became even more amazing after I saw the film. And I wondered, you did it so quickly, you know, you, you became Barton Fink. What, what goes on in, a, in an actor's mind when you become something else? Is it you put on a face first, right. you get an idea? What do you well, do? that was sort of just the uh, uh, outline of what I did last night. I had to recall something that I you know, did a year ago. and. I really just was doing it for Ted and Jim Pettis. You know, I thought they'd get a kick out of it, and uh, I was a little nervous because I was just basically winging it and improvising. <laughs> but uh, when you when you do do something, each character it's really different. But it's uh, you know you draw from a lot of different circumstances. Some just immediate visceral reaction, and some with Barton Fink it was a combination of doing a lot of studying before I did it and also finding certain and then physical things came out of that uh, my well one thing i always think about when i do a character is where their center is physically and uh, it's an interesting thing to explore i've done it on stage a lot because on stage you really have to use your body uh, because you you're the whole picture you're the editor you're, you're the camera in a way so you know people because of their psychology, or the way they grew up, or whatever, they have it manifests them in their physicality in very different ways. And you know, just by moving your head like that, it's a very different thing. You know, is that your sort of center? If your forehead is your center, and then the other people, you know, it's, they're more open. That's just much more. Well, for and, example, I mean, you know, you in person are very physical. You look like a jock. Yet Barton Fink, you right. know, is, is this repressed, self-righteous, right. uh, pseudo-communist writer who grew up in the 30s and is uh, a non-physical character. You know, the way the way you held your shoulders the entire right. film yeah. and the way you held your mouth, you know, was was such kind of um, physical weakness and repression. Well, sort of, I thought. You know, first of all, he's a writer. He's humped over his typewriter a lot. <laughs> it doesn't stretch out. Uh, but I, I sort of conceived it I, that he was kind of in a cocoon or a shell or something. Yeah. And that was sort of the the image that I went. And someone actually said to me last night when they saw me in the underwear, and my shoulders were still a little bit big. Yeah. I said, well, I, I did the, the best I could do with the body that I have. I mean, it's hard to... <laughs> You Even if you stopped. lose some weight, you should have stopped pumping. Let's, no, let's, I actually did. I didn't. Let, let's take a, a quick look. We have a clip uh, of uh, you and uh, I, I guess John Goodman uh, in, in the uh, in, in, in the film Barton uh, Fink. Okay. Mm -hmm. But even even when he Barton Fink moves forward, he's still in his shell. He doesn't yeah. listen to anybody. He's all closed. Well, up. That's what that scene is about, yeah. basically. I mean, a lot of the movie is about a guy who lives in his mind. Mm -hmm naive character and then life intrudes upon him in this film and takes him on a journey that he is not in control of and it's sort of a uh, you could call it a coming of age story in, in, in a way and he sort of grows up throughout the film well, I thought of it as Dante's Inferno I mean I thought he, he comes through hell comes to the other end right. you know does his great piece of well we better stop because I, it's not fair to spoil this Oh, it's, uh, it's open really, to interpretation, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about other interpretations, the two Bensonhurst uh, men that you play in the two Spike Lee movies, mm -hmm. when Nightwatch continues.
Still to come on Night Watch, more on Barton Fink and entertainment strongman Brandon Tartikoff. Now in Washington, here is Night Watch guest anchor Robert Lipsight. Welcome back to Night Watch. We're talking with John Turturro. John, it, it seems that you've made some sort of a statement in that so much of your, your film work has been with either the Coen brothers or with, with Spike Lee. You know, does it just break that way, or, or are these well, you know, directors who offer you something? People come together because they're interested in your work or you like their work, and uh, I'm, I have nice relationships with both of them and with all three of them. I would think of them as friends, basically. I mean, we've become, you know, friendlier as we've worked. But that's just how it, that's how it happens sometimes. We're all, all around the same age, and and uh, maybe that's uh, repertory, something to do with a it. repertory company so, evolves out of film. In, in Do the Right Thing and in Jungle Fever, you play. Uh, uh, stop me before right. I kill. Uh, you play flip sides, in a sense, yeah. of the same character. Two young men growing up, you know, stereotypical. Uh, Italian-Americans growing right. up in, in Bensonhurst. Uh, one uh, evolves on screen as a racist, the other troubled by racism. Right. 